<laughs> All right, we are live. Happy Wednesday. This is so exciting. I think this is the first time since the pandemic I have an actual human in here with me, and we have Grimado our kitchen. I know originally I said we were going to do live, uh, go live at 3.30, but David is early, oh. so it's all good. It's better early than late, because for those of you who get on 3.30, uh, 3 they can just watch the video that's already done. Okay. So I have David here. He is the sales director for Continuum, and thank you so much for coming. It's a and pleasure. this is a couple who want to be in the camera as well, <laughs> <laughs> as you guys might know. So David, can you please tell me a little bit, uh, for lo I mean, I obviously love, love, love the Continuum, and a lot of the serious wine collector have heard about your winery, of course. Um, but for those of you who might be new to this winery, can you tell them a little bit about Continuum? Yeah, uh, well, uh, for those of you who are new to Continuum, the interesting thing is it may be a new winery to you or a new brand, but actually the family is, almost everybody who's listening will know the, the family. The family who created Continuum is the Mandavi family. Uh, this is more specifically Robert Mandavi uh, and his son Tim and daughter uh, Marcia, Marcy. Marcy. Um, not everybody knows because it's a long time ago, but in 1994, the family of the Robert Davi Winery, along with everything that was involved with that, that was Opus One and, um, and uh, Senya, uh, which is down in Chile, and all these collaborations had created a, a need to go public. In 1994, they had gone public, and in 2004, sadly, they lost control of the winery. Uh, the, a, new, a company came in, amassed enough public stock, and basically told the Mandavis to get lost. So gone was Opus One, gone was Robert Mandavi, gone was 350 acres of Tokalon, oh. gone was Ornalaya, um, Acepto, some of the great wines of the world that Angie probably has so sold to you and hopefully will sell to you. Um, and so they wanted to start over. So Continuum is such a great name because it's a continuation, if you can read it there, of the great things that the family had started, had hoped for. And now it's just one wine, much like Opus One, is defined by one wine, a Bordeaux blend, organically farmed, and with the idea that Tim wants to create one wine that stands on, on the shoulders of his family and speaks to the great wines of the world. So it's uh, Tim who made the wines for 29 years at Robin Davi, and then there was a collaborative winemaker at Opus One for 25 years, is taking all of that experience and now Extra, using that at Opus, uh, to, to Continuum. So the, the property is 38 acres up on Pritchard Hill, all nice. old vines. That's amazing. And, um, and in 2017, of course, we, had, uh, we, we were subjected to the fire that affected a lot of the Cabernet Franc. None of the fire lots were included in the final blend, so it's just purely everything that was harvested pre-fire. And with Tim's mastery, mastery of blending, He's made this very, very, uh, this lovely wine. Um, for those of you who like European wine, I think the Continuum is a really great wine because it's very elevated, it's very fresh, beautiful acidity and balance. Oh my God. So uh, we're very, very excited to represent this. We only have a little over 2,000 cases of wine production. And, um, and we're happy to sell it to folks like Angie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is such a rare treat. Did you, what is the normal uh, production value? Did you guys have it lower because of the fire? That's the correct, 17? yeah. So it was, it, normally we make about 3,500 cases a year. So and this year is 2,200. Wow, and I'm really honored I got 12 bottles. So <laughs> the blend this year is a little bit different as uh, well, you yeah, said. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. I have a blending ticket here. Okay, so let's just... do it. This is so exciting. <laughs> and by the way, um, we are doing this live at three o'clock in the afternoon. When you have such a lovely wine, it, you really need some food to go with it, I feel oh, like. But right. I didn't have any, I didn't want to cook up a steak at three o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe I should have. <laughs> but here we got some hamon, so I'm like, oh, we get some food. Yeah. wine pairing yeah. going on. I'm not yeah. sure if it's going to be the perfect pairing. Now, when Tim is drinking this, what does he like to do? Does he like to drink it on his own, or what does he like oh, to drink, uh, eat with it? Well, you know, I, I don't know what Tim likes, but I know what I like. Okay, what do you like? Tell me. Um, I really love uh, savory meats. Yeah. So I love things food. like short rib. Um, so what I do is I actually sous vide the short rib to oh. cut a corner on it. Nice. And then I do a reduction. So uh, osaboko for those people who do that. Nice. Um, and then, um, you know, just all those earthy meats that we'll be getting into uh, coming in probably just a few weeks here even though it may be 75 degrees outside, we'll be getting into these very heart, you know, gathering, very earthy flavors. And so, yeah, so 
I love those those savory savory flavors. I uh, I'm glad we're I think we're on the same page. That's why I kind of brought up the hamon, which has a lot of the last mm -hmm. sa savory mm -hmm. nuttiness to it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to try it. So this year, the 2017's blend is 64% Cabernet Sauvignon, 18% Cap Franc. 9% Petit Verdot and 9% Malot. And you said Cap Franc because they're later harvesting or is it because where they're facing, that's why it got affected by it's, that? The Cabernet Franc is the vines that we planted in 2010. Mm. So the old vines come in before the young vines do. So uh, so all of our, most of our Cabernet Sauvignon is old vine uh, that was planted in 1990 and 1996. But our Cabernet Franc is, we have a small block of Cabernet Franc but then most of our Cabernet Franc is 2010, so it's a little bit later, and sadly, did not uh, did not make it. Yeah, it did not make it because of the smoke the smoke affected properties. So, 2017 is a really important vintage to be to work with people like Angie, uh, if I may say so, because it is a vintage that you have to taste. It is a vintage that uh, if you look at some of the critics, they've said, well, we included everything, and then other people say we'll include nothing, and and um, what we are learning is that smoke taint is does have an effect. Yes. Um, it may not be smoke per se, but it takes away the, the freshness of the wine. So uh, so those were why, at least for continuum, those blocks were not included because of the absence of freshness and uh, the vitality of the wine, which we think is so important in the mid palate and in the freshness and the aromatics. Yeah, there's no not a hint of smoke taint in this at all. It's still really fresh. It's very vibrant. A lot of red fruits on the upper atmosphere. Yes, here's the thing I love about your wine. I feel like, especially as a Salme train base, we are learned to, we're trained to hate New World wine almost, because mm -hmm. a lot of the California mm -hmm. Cabernet are so, what we call, over extracted, overblown. Mm -hmm. It's very, oh. like, big, oaky, tannicky, like, dark red fruit. They just punch you in the face, and it just, mm -hmm. you, there's no, like, it just, mm -hmm. it's so, just overpowering. It feels like um, um, someone from Jersey Shore spread like a whole bottle of cologne and then someone walk into your house and you're just like, oh my God. Oh, that's pretty bitter. Like, like just tone <laughs> it down a bit. So yeah. I'm always appreciative when you find a Napa or a California producer that finds a balance. Because I know yeah. there's also producer yeah. out there that kind of take it to the other extreme. They almost, un they, they harvest it under ripe mm. and they wanted to achieve that greenness, yeah. Yeah. that earthiness, yeah. Yeah. almost too much. And then you're like, but that's the beauty of California, not how long you're supposed to have that run this. But I think you guys always run such a good balance it's, on that. Yeah, thank you. It's hard, to, you know, mm. pyrazine is a compound that's founded in the, the Sauvignon Blanc family. So the, like Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Gris, Cabernet Sauvignon. And so it stays resident in the clusters. And so it reduces over time. So you have to have hang time to get rid of the pyrazine, which is this green bell pepper flavor. And then you have but you develop more phenolics. But as you go through the growing season, then of course you're more subject to late season threats, such as rain and, or in our case, smoke. Yes. So, um, so to get what people are picking now, they're picking a little bit earlier because they avoid those uh, types of things, yes. but there, there's usually pyrazine that can result. So here we're trying to eliminate, to matriculate the pyrazine out and have the wine that's very, at the same time, very fresh. And, and very beautiful acidity, I think. I, yes, I think so. Pritchard yeah. Hill, I think the terroir there, all the wines from there do have a really good kick of acidity mm. there in the back end. The color is beautiful too. It's like a ruby red. It's mm. not a super overly mega purple color, uh, um, which I think is gorgeous. Yeah, and if I may just, yes. that wine is unfiltered, unfined. It is. And wow. so, and one of the things we do, not to get too technical here, but mm. we have 18 months of Elevage. It's not unusual. But we only rack three times. What that means is that we don't we don't unnecessarily destabilize the wine in the oak. That means the less we shake it around and rack it, which means to rack it off into a new barrel, and we less we we basically uh, will let the sediments drop in the barrel. So the wine that you see has this amazing clarity, mm -hmm. but beautiful, beautiful, vivid color. And it's unfined and filtered, which means that uh, Tim's idea is, is that he wants the wine to be, uns he uses the word, unsculpted. I love it. He doesn't want it just to, he wants it to be as rich as organically can be. So, yeah. It really does write out that edge of it being really 
elegant but not overly made up if mm. that makes sense it just uh, right yeah. there yeah the composition is to really identify it's really a california napa cap you yes. can't misidentify that no. but the wine has a buoyancy to it it mm. has a, it has a suspension to it that it isn't it isn't defined in weight as you as angie classically really what's that like most are over extracted the jersey shore thing mm. like the, there's but this allows for this refreshment uh, to go on mm. in the wine. That that it's so it's so there's a vitality to the wine mm -hmm. that I think Tim is able to capture through his years of making great wines in the past. It is really lively. It doesn't feel heavy at all. Mm. And I'm loving the fact that I got David here because normally when I do this video, I have to do all the talking, and now he gets to talk, and I'm like doing this full wine pairing. It's amazing. It actually right. has enough acidity to carry, kind of that. Um, the, the salty and fattiness of this Hamon Lake, which I want to thank my friend Kirk for sponsoring the Hamon Lake for the, um, this purpose. Mm. It is mm. so beautiful. That is a good pairing. I actually wasn't sure, but this was mm. like the only light meat dessert mm. I have. And I was like, let's put it out. And generally when you do, whenever I, we have um, this kind of tray tasting, there's usually a spit cut in from because mm. you're supposed to spit it out. But like mm. Anton Eagle from Ratatouille, when the food is good, I do not spit. <laughs> when the wine wow. is good, do not spit it out. This is absolutely delicious. So, and I think upside aging potential mm -hmm. is, um, 17 is really unusual because I actually think it's one of the most approachable wines we've made. 13 and 15 really are very much tannic, much more structured wines. 17 is, it's got the richness for aging. It has the acidity for aging, but it's just really, really it's, good right it's, now. I know. I'm just like, it's really enjoyable right now, which I find surprising for mm. a young cat. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And I love cat frying the blend. I always feel like mm. it adds a little, again, a lot more mm. like floral, that like softness. Uh, uh, gumbo, not yeah. yours. No. The, the gumbo is like, oh, I smell the moon. <laughs> very well behaved. I know. <laughs> not his baby. Not his baby. He said, let me add it. <laughs> Sorry. Our, our, our dog are um, uh, very uh, uh, friendly. Are you going to look in the camera? Mm. Well, lovely. Wow, thank you very much. That is thank delicious. You. I don't know what else we wanted to add here, but I, I think if you have a chance, definitely put your hand on this. I think I've been um, selling and uh, offering their wine since 2012, and every year I'm lucky if I get 12 bottles. So it's quite. She's believing she's always yeah. calling me. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite a special treat. And oh, actually, one last thing I do want to have you share. Are you guys open to the wine, uh, uh, the public mm. as far as visiting? How does that go? Because it is one of the most yeah. beautiful winery I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, well, we're open to the uh, to the public. It is by appointment. Mm -hmm. And with COVID, it is super by appointment now. Yes. Um, we can only yes. have people, uh, one group now. We only have one inside place. And while the weather is good, we can have somebody outside. So now it's two groups, one in the two in the morning and two in the afternoon. And that's all. Um, and so as we move inside, the variable is maybe we're going to have one and one so we're certainly open we would love to have angie come up with you yes um whoever so buys allocation yeah I'll take you there <laughs> yep. we can do something collaborative but yes. uh, but we'd love to have you it's as an angie suggested it's really really a beautiful breathtaking spot awesome so, yeah. well thank you very much for your time david and yeah, yeah cheers to cheers. you cheers to you and everybody be safe and good holiday season yes cheers to you all i'll upload it later <laughs>